Ivy Beauties, Dr. Stephanie Kappel, board certified cosmetic dermatologist in Orange County, Newport Beach, California, here to do a video on today's topic, which is skincare over 50. So different active ingredients that you should look for in more mature skin. And this is a very commonly asked question that I got. And when I took a little survey on my YouTube shorts, this is what y'all wanted to hear about. So here we go. So we're talking about senolytics, you'll see the term zombie cells a lot in the literature. Now, what is a zombie cell? A zombie cell is also a senescent cell. And cellular senescence is just when cells become less active, less productive, and I wanna say less healthy, but they're not acting and behaving as they did when you were younger. And this doesn't just happen to the skin, it happens in all organ systems, with all cells and every organ system. Dermatology just happens to be a very fascinating specialty, and this is why I went into dermatology when I was in medical school. I thought it was fascinating that it was an outward representation of what's going on inside the body, but that you can actually see. It's tactile you can look at it you can view it you can analyze it and you can see the aging process happen in our skin but you can't see the aging process happen in your immune system or your neurological system or your musculoskeletal system you'll just see that people as they get older will start to have more arthritis aches and pains as their musculoskeletal system you know kind of degrades and you get osteoporosis and you get you know arthritis and your immune function starts to become senescent as well as you can't fight off disease and infectious disease as well and you need more um you know immunotherapy um your neurological system also becomes those neurons become senescent as you start to get you know motor neuropathy or paresthesias all these things happen as we age but in the skin you just happen to see them you see fine lines and wrinkles and volume loss and skin laxity and lumps and bumps and you know texture irregularities all these things that happen as our skin ages but the interesting thing is is that if you're over the age of 50 or if you're over the age of 40 or 60 or however old you are if you're using active ingredients that can stimulate your skin cells to act and behave younger and to function optimally like they did when they were in your 20s then that just gives beautiful beautiful youthful looking skin so healthy skin is beautiful skin healthy skin is made up and comprised of skin cells that are getting the nutrients that they need getting the stimulus that they need and acting and behaving younger which just means they're acting like they used to and the reason why you know youthful skin acts and behaves younger is because it hasn't had the lifetime of perturbations from the environment or from uv light and time and the telomere shortening telomeres are protective dna that are on your ends of your chromosomes that kind of keep your dna protected and with each cellular division they get shorter and shorter and shorter so the true anti-aging is to stop the disintegration and shortening of your telomeres but that's a whole different video and that's a little too scientific for right now so in patients with mature skin, it's really important to give your skin cells the active ingredients that they need to decrease their senescent um, activity and to stimulate optimal behavior so that the skin cells can function optimally like they did when you were in your 20s or in your adolescence or a kid. If you look at a child's skin, you know, I have, a, I have an 11 year old and I have an eight year old and I look at their skin all the time and it's just full of life. It's the vitality it's dewy it's glassy it's dewy it's bouncy it's rubbery it's squishy and it's just so perfect now if you look under the microscope at the skin cells in a child the cellular renewal process is much faster the cells those fibroblasts are making a lot more collagen hyaluronic acid elastin and there's not that much damage that has occurred yet if you look at older skin i remember in my icu rotation when i was an intern in internal medicine before doing my dermatology residency i would sit in the icu and be like three in the morning i'd be taking care of these icu patients and they'd be just you know older people with this dull list lackluster listless skin that almost looked like gray and there was pigmentation splotches and it just it lacked, lacked that vitality it didn't have that vibrant alive look it looked dull and gray and like lackluster and so what happens is when you give your skin the active ingredients to act and behave optimally the cellular renewal process gets kicked up and your cells start you know producing more collagen and elastin and renewing themselves and minimizing inflammation and repairing dna mutations that have occurred Occurred that can prevent not only you know skin cancers but the aging process from happening further as well so active ingredients especially in more mature skin where those cells need a little bit extra help to like wake up and perform and act like they used to is really really critical and really important in a skincare line so when you look at the time it takes for skin to renew itself in a baby a child adolescent and an adult it definitely slows down so in babies the skin renews itself every 14 days 
So once you become an adolescent, that slows down to actually every 28 days. So in adolescence and in your 20s, the cellular renewal rate goes from 14 days to 28 days. And as you hit 50 and beyond, that can slow down to 84 days. So the skin cell is not refreshing itself. It's kind of like closing apps on your screen. On your but the good news is with the right active ingredients, we can get the skin cells to be stimulated to act and behave younger to where the skin cell cycle starts to go back to where it was in your 20s at 28 days. So if you look, and I've researched this extensively and I've spent decades looking at skin cells under the microscope as a Mohs surgeon, and so this is where I became really, really intent and I wanted to start my own skin line because if you can stimulate the cellular renewal process to go from 84 days to 24 days, that's when you have this beautiful, bright, vibrant skin. And I have patients you know, who are over the age of 50 and they come in and they literally have baby skin. So I always found it very fascinating. Even when I was doing skin cancer surgery and I'd be looking at skin under the microscope, I'd be like, why is this woman, ha she's you know 70 years old, but her skin looks 20 under the microscope. What is she using? And I would look it up and I would compare the active ingredients to see what people's skin look like under the microscope because that translates to visibly, clinically beautiful skin as well. So the good thing is, is that you know we can, you know, have our cells and our skin act and behave younger by just giving them what they need and the right active ingredients to increase cellular renewal, increase collagen and elastin synthesis, decrease inflammation, and to correct and protect, correct DNA damage with DNA repair enzymes that not only protect us from skin cancer and a lot of dermatologic conditions, but also just make our skin look younger and healthier. That starts at a cellular level, which is really important. So that's why I'm glad you guys asked me to do skincare active ingredients over the age of 50, what's important to look for, and what you should look for when you're buying skincare products in a different various um, medical grade skincare lines. So as far as active ingredients for skincare over 50, one of the most important active ingredients that you should find in your skincare products are peptides or growth factors. Peptides and growth factors both do the same thing. I feel like growth factors are a little bit old school. I think peptides are more um, elegantly engineered and we know a lot more of science and technology and innovative uh, mechanisms for these peptides to work smarter with less side effects and less risk of overstimulating, um, which can lead to possible tumor genesis or other bad things that we don't want to happen in the skin. I used growth factors for decades and I love them and I'm more of a peptide girl because I'm also a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon and you know in our Mohs fellowship um, it was very looked down upon to have growth factors because you know they could be tumorigenic or there could be you know, some potential to, you know, overstimulate cells in a negative way. Um, but that's not to say anybody who's watching this video, if you use growth factors and you like them, that's, there's nothing contraindicated. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't use growth factors, but when I have a choice between growth factors and peptides, I choose peptides just because I feel like it's a little bit more innovative, a little bit more elegant, and they actually do the same thing. And I feel like they're a little bit smarter because they're not harvested from, you know, penile foreskin, like, you know, I mean, one of the TNS essential serums from Skin Medica, that's where those growth factors are harvested from. I like the Zio Skin Health growth factors because they're plant-based a little bit more, but honestly, when talking about growth factors, I prefer peptides. So in my skincare line, um, MDR, I have just very elegantly innovative peptides that are going to do things safely and effectively in the skin, stimulate the cells to make more collagen, more elastin, increase cellular renewal, um, increase the more ground substance of the skin to give us plumper, smoother, tighter contour, shrink the anchoring fibrils at the dermopodermal junction to give that smooth, tight, I think a lot of patients use the word bouncy skin, which is a more youthful look to the skin that starts at a cellular level. So I love peptides, but peptides and growth factors both do the same thing. And their role in the skin is intracellular communication. So whenever, say for example, there's injury to the skin, your cells release mediators, chemical mediators or chemokines or growth factors or peptides, which can signal to between cells to increase collagen, to increase elastin, to um, renew themselves, to recruit inflammation or decrease inflammation. So that's how cells used to talk to one another. So in the skincare industry, what we do is we harvest those growth factors or peptides or chemical chemokines or mediators and put them into a skincare product so that you're basically just signaling to your skin cells to do what you want them to do, to have anti-aging effects, whether that's through stimulation of you know collagen fibers, elastin fibers, increasing cellular renewal and strengthening the barrier, all the things that we want them to do. That's how cells talk to one another. So in the skincare industry, we can harvest those in the lab and put them into skincare products to have the most amazing effects on the skin. And that's how growth factors and peptides work. So those are really important um, active ingredients to look in for mature skin and for my patients over the age of 50. Next up, as far as important active ingredients for over 50, 
antioxidants, especially vitamin C. And out of the vitamin C's, there's THD, there's all different kinds of vitamin C's, but the L-ascorbic acid has the most data research and science proving its effects in anti-aging effects on the skin to increase collagen stimulation, to help relieve um, the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, dispigmentation, brown spots. Antioxidants are really important to correct and protect the skin from photo-aging. So after the age of 50, even if somebody's really good about wearing their sunscreen and their skincare, they're going to still continue to age and have brown spots and continue to make these um, have these changes in the skin and a lot of my patients will say dr Cappell, why am i getting brown spots i'm wearing sunscreen and i'm so diligent about my skincare and i have been since i was 30 and now i'm 55 and it's still happening but what happens is all the cumulative sun damage that you had over your entire life even especially before the age of 18 will help will come to haunt you later on so even if you're super diligent about your skincare unless you continue on the process of having healthy skin and using good skincare products and having dermatologic treatments in the office that'll catch up to you so even if you're in a dark room and you never see the sun you'll still get brown spots from photo damage that happened long ago so it's good to stay on top of it and i love vitamin c and antioxidants for the skin because it binds free radicals it stimulates the cells to act and behave younger and it just you know it's a free, free radical scavenger and it undoes damage that has happened to the DNA in the skin. DNA repair enzymes are really important too, but you know, L-ascorbic acid, um, uh, astaxanthin, CoQ10, there's lots of different um, antioxidants that are really important for the skin, but I feel like L-ascorbic acid is one of the most important ones that you should look for if you're over the age of 50. Vitamin C formulations are very finicky. A lot of skincare companies don't put L-ascorbic acid in their formulations because it's very hard to stabilize. So that's where the vehicle delivery systems come in really handy, and that's why I actually want Wanted to launch my own line because when this innovative technology came out I'm like I need this right now we needed this yesterday in our skincare products and I don't want to wait five to six years for it to become mainstream so um, it's really important to have a formulation that works keeps the vitamin C or antioxidant that you're having in your formulation stable and effective and it gets to where it needs to go and it remains effective but the reason why we need more antioxidants in our skincare products over the age of 50 is to kind of repair damage that has accumulated over a lifetime of sun exposure, you know, exposure to blue light, HEV light, environmental pollutants, and so forth. In addition, over the age of 50, vitamin A derivatives become very important. Now, whether this is in the form of a retinoid, a retinal, a retinaldehyde, a dapoline, tazeratine, whatever, whatever retin-A or vitamin A derivative you're using and your skin can tolerate, and sometimes you need to build up a tolerance for it, is, is good enough. So I don't want patients to get hung up on, I need to be on like a tazeratine every night, you know, a pea-sized amount of it. The goal is not to use the strongest or the heaviest or the most frequent use of a vitamin vitamin A derivative. The, the goal is to find one that works for your skin, that's right for you, that doesn't cause too much irritation or damage to the barrier, but actually strengthens the barrier and enhances um, cellular renewal and does all the things that vitamin A derivatives do for the skin. So there's always a balance and I feel like people sometimes get too consumed and uh, preoccupied with being on like the strongest Retin-A or the most frequent use of Retin-A and what works for one person may not work for the other. And I've done other YouTube videos if you want to check it out on how to titrate yourself up to a healthy vitamin A derivative of your choice. And so, you know, if one person's using a retinaldehyde and one person's using like a, you know, 0.05% um, tretinoin cream, they may have the same response. And that may be because things differ, like patients may vary with the thickness of the skin, with their immune profile in the skin, other, you know, barrier deficits, you know, people may be more predisposed to, a, you know, eczema or dry skin or oily skin, there's a different density of sebaceous glands, so everybody's a little bit different, so don't get hung up on having to be on the strong strength of a vitamin A derivative, it doesn't even have to be a prescription strength retin-A, retinaldehyde's amazing, retinol is amazing, and not all retinols are created equal, you know, in my line, my arcs are retinol is micro encapsulated and it's smart technology and engineering that keeps it in the nucleus of the cell so it doesn't stay in the extracellular space to cause all that red dryness irritation and sensitivity so it's important to get a vitamin a derivative that works well for your skin and once you try it out you'll see which one's right for you but as long as you're using some type of retin-a or a vitamin a derivative whatever form that may be in over the age of 50 is really important 
Okay, another must in a skincare regimen for mature skin is our hydrators. So hydrators help reinforce the barrier, it helps minimize transepidermal water loss, and it helps hydrate the keratinocytes in the skin cells from within. And our ability to hydrate ourselves and for our skin cells to hydrate themselves kind of diminishes and starts to fall off after the age of 50. So increasing your use of hydration um, is really important. So natural moisturization factors, ceramides, um, hyaluronic acid, high weight hyaluronic acid molecules, because low molecular weight hyaluronic acid molecules can be um, pro-inflammatory. So using hydrators and NMFs that are gonna allow the skin cells to hold on to water becomes really important as we get older because our barrier gets disrupted, our skin thins, our epidermis thins, and our dermis thins, and that barrier that allows transepidermal water loss to occur kind of gets broken down. So it's really important to not only hydrate from within, you know, drink at least two liters of water a day if you can, and then also use hydrators for your skin. So I like to have hydrators that also do a little bit more than just hydrate the skin, but also provide barrier repair, DNA repair enzymes, also that include you know peptides that have you know really important um, roles in anti-aging as well. So you don't want to hydrate skin doesn't need oil to hydrate; it needs water. When you're working out at the gym and you're thirsty, you don't grab your hydro flask full of oil or sebum. You grab your hydro flask full of water to replenish those cells. All the cells in the body rely on water, not oil or sebum, to hydrate. Last but not least, all my beauties over the age of 50, make sure that you're wearing a good mineral-based sunscreen or a sunscreen that contains broad spectrum coverage and also contains iron oxides in it. Remember, iron oxides not only protects our skin from UVA light that can cause photoaging, but UVB rays that can cause more skin cancer, but also HEV light, um, intense infrared light, blue light, and environmental pollutants because these can not only age us, but this can increase um, inflammation in the skin. It can flare um, dermatologic conditions like seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea, adult acne, perioral facial dermatitis, all these nasty dermatologic diseases that happen when we're older that you think we should have grown out of when we we're teenagers or in our 20s, but kind of creep back in because there's pro-inflammatory uh, cascades going on in the skin. And so this can be accentuated with UV light, HEV light, blue light, even from our devices, even if you're not in the sun, but you're under fluorescent lights or you're on your computer screen or watching your tablet late at night in bed, this can be pro-inflammatory. So make sure that um, you, know, you have iron oxides in your sunscreen or if you don't have a sunscreen with iron oxides, you get one that has iron oxide because you want to protect from UVA, UVB, HEV, blue light, infrared light, and environmental pollutants because this will break down collagen. It will increase collagenase and matrix metalloproteinases, which basically wreak havoc on the skin on a cellular level, causes free radicals, pro-inflammatory cascades, flaring of dermatologic diseases, premature aging, stretching out of the pores, all the things that we don't want it to do. So all my beauties over the age of 50, I mean, any beauty of any age should always be wearing sunscreen, but especially this becomes important after the age of 50 because not only are you protecting yourself from future damage, but you're also trying to reverse damage that you've accumulated in your skin over a lifetime. So never be without your sunscreen, always reapply. And if you need some sunscreen recommendations, I mean, I love color science. I feel like they're next level in technology. Um, it's probably one of my favorite and most of my dermatology colleagues um, will agree as well. But hopefully this answers your questions and these are my must haves and your skincare ingredients for over the age of 50. You guys asked for it, there it is. And be sure to subscribe and to follow and share this video with anyone who may find it useful. All right, I love you guys.